Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. We'll wait just a few minutes and let some of you join us before we get started. Here we go. If you're joining us, say hi. Tell us where you're watching from. Hey, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Caroline. Haley. Arizona and Oregon. Here they come. Colorado, gotta love it. <laughs> Pennsylvania and Georgia. <clears throat> All over. We got people coming yeah, on from everywhere. So awesome. You're taking time out of your day to join us. All right, guys, we have a good group right here, so we'll go ahead and get started. So we have a special guest with us today. We have Dr. Sherry Johnson, and she's going to talk about rehabilitation and the use of cold therapy for tendon, stifle, and back injuries in horses. Be sure to put your questions in the comments. Um, she is here to answer all those for you today. And at the end of the live, live segment, one lucky viewer is going to win a pair of Ice Horse Suspensory Wraps. That is just a pretty cool prize right there. So uh, be sure to get any questions in there if you have them. And with that, Dr. Johnson, we are going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Well, th thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I really would like to, to take a moment and just thank um, Valley Vet for having me today um, and also um, Ice Horse's continued support of the equine athlete through their line of, of custom icing equipment. Um, I'm super honored to be here today. I'm a little bit nervous. I haven't done an event quite um, like this before, so I hope you guys all take it easy on me. <laughs> um, and please um, shoot your questions into the chat. That's that's really we want to make this event um, for you guys, and and we're here for you to make it as educational and as helpful as possible. Um, so please don't make me feel alone. Please shoot your your comments in the chat. Um, these guys are going to be helping me field those questions, so we're going to try to get to as many of them as we can. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of my background and, and introduce myself. I'm sure that I don't know the majority of you on here because I'm very much a Western performance horse veterinarian. Um, so again, my, my name is Sherry Johnson and I am actually a Midwest farm girl. I grew up in Iowa on a row crop farm. Um, I did my veterinary training at Iowa State University, both my undergrad and my veterinary school. Um, I've been, my poor husband, we've been moved all over the country throughout my veterinary training. Um, so following graduation from Iowa State, I did an internship down at Equine Medical Center of Ocala um, in Ocala, Florida. I spent a brief time um, on a racetrack practice going back to central Iowa before I transitioned into Colorado State University's sports medicine and rehab uh, residency program. Uh, my residency was a little bit non-traditional in the sense that it was funded by Equine Sports Medicine, LLC, that is actually based out of Pilot Point, Texas. So I like to tell people I'm this hybrid of academia and private practice. So I did the bulk of my residency training um, in the private practice sector of things. And once I completed my residency, I got board certified through the College um, of Veterinary Sports Medicine and Rehab. So I am a board certified specialist. And then as if that wasn't um, enough torture for professional training, I then transitioned into a PhD program at Colorado State University, the orthopedic um, re, uh, 
a research center um, and completed my PhD just this past fall um, in orthopedic rehab, specifically through Colorado State University. So that's it. I am done with formal education. I have uh, guaranteed my husband of that uh, many times over. So I am very, very proud to fly the flag that I have dedicated my entire professional career to the rehab, the orthopedic rehab um, of equine athletes. And in that capacity, um, I am a senior partner and managing rehab veterinarian of our practice. So our practice is equine sports medicine and rehabilitation, and we are based out of Pilot Point, Texas. And there's actually three divisions of our practice. So we have a home clinic that's based in Pilot Point, Texas. We have our mobile center that travels the major quarter horse um, shows. So we will actually provide on-site care to actively competing horses. And then we have our rehab centers. That's plural now. I'm super excited. So we have a rehab center that's based in Whitesboro, Texas. And we are also opening, as of this month, our second rehab center in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I'm over the moon excited um, about all of the things that we have going on as, as a practice. And we are one of very, very few um, specialist owned and operated rehab centers in the country. So we're definitely dedicated to doing evidence-based type practices and, and really trying to push that needle forward in terms of improving recovery rates and um, just really helping the equine athlete in a variety of capacities. So that's kind of the long-winded version of me. Um, and I live in North Texas uh, and I tell people I live everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. So I spend, you know, about 100 to 150 days a year um, working at the quarter horse shows. Our practice does serve as the official AQHA World Show Veterinarian. So the Youth World, Select World, Open World. Um, our practice is there. And then the rest of the time I'm at one of our two rehab centers. So I, I do nothing but eat, sleep and breathe horses and their rehab. So thank you so much for having me. All right. We did have a few questions coming in as you were doing your introduction there. I don't know um, if we wait till she kind of goes in. Yeah. We had a question about minor arthritis and if this is a type of therapy that could be useful for a horse with minor arthritis. Yeah. Yeah. So, and should I just kind of take them, yeah. you know, we can just kind of work our way through them. So yeah. mm -hmm. um, just, just to take one step back, I like to um, get on my soapbox for, for just a hot second about rehab and what that means to various people, right? Um, rehab in and of itself, I, I tell people there's a lot of different phases of rehab and it really distills down to what each horse's specific diagnosis is their goal and where they are, you know, in that recovery spectrum. Um, every single horse is different, right? And I have, I have never actually built or designed the same exact rehab program for two horses ever in my whole life. So everything I do is extremely custom. Um, and going back to, to your comments about minor arthritis, right? Is like we, you know, in working with your veterinarian about which joint it's in, um, how severely the horse is affected, and also very importantly, what are the, com we call them comorbidities, what are the secondary weaknesses or functional compensations that come along with that original injury or your primary diagnosis? And so I think as the field of rehab has really evolved and it's, it's really become way more, right, than just stall rest and hand walking, um, we're able to work on flexibility. We're able to work on balance and proprioception, um, core stability, strength, all of those kind of things. So um, when we're talking about cold therapy specifically, um, that is a, a modality that I use all the time, whether I'm working with a truly injured, like actively rehab, rehabbing horse or a healthy competing athlete. Um, with the genesis of trying to reduce inflammation, um, trying to reduce the pain sensations that the body is feeling. And I tell people all of the time, right, like you can get caught in a trough of despair and people kind of giggle when I say that, but it, it's true, right? And if, if you have ever had your own orthopedic injury that you've had to recover from, you're aware that a lot of times there's a there's a pain component to things that keeps you from progressing in terms of flexibility and strength and endurance 
and the ability to move forward in a rehab program. So it ends up being this cycle, right? I have pain and disuse because I'm not moving and I'm not moving because I have pain and disuse. And ICE is really one of the most effective therapies that we have from ages and ages and ages ago that really helps us as veterinarians break into that pain cycle and get those horses out of that little trough so that we can safely and comfortably start to initiate some of those other therapies um, that we so desperately need. So. I'm glad you guys are reading the comments because they're coming in. <laughs> they're coming in. They're coming in pretty quick. Um, and um, and um, I can't really keep up. We have a lot of questions about the ice therapy, so I don't know if we want to ask all of them or go into it and talk about it. Or yeah, I like um, Christine's comments about the only advantage we have in Minnesota. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know I'm Iowa girl, uh, born and raised. So I, I fully get that. Um, so yeah, that, that comment does make me. Um, <laughs> so, and I, you know, the, the application of cold therapy specifically, right. Can be done in a lot of different ways. Um, obviously the, the ice horse and whoever gets the free suspensory wraps, like winner, winner, chicken dinner, because this is actually my, my favorite. Can I say that ice horse, one of my favorite products that you guys have, I don't know, the stifle wraps might be my most favorite. Um, those are kind of really my like personal favorites. Um, but the benefit of this icing system, right. Is, is several things. One is that. Um, the ice stays long, colder for longer than the other commercial products available. Um, secondly, the anatomic fit is just so much better, particularly for difficult to ice areas, like classically, like the stifle. Um, the stifle wrap and the reason it's one of my favorites is because I can do a lot of things with it, um, even outside of ice therapy. So I can apply heat, I can use um, PEMF therapy, and I can use ice. So I can actually use a lot of things with that wrap. It's super, super versatile and it keeps you from standing there for hours on end, which is, which is a great thing. Um, the other thing about the great anatomic fit, right, is that we're an ability to provide uniform compression. So not only are you delivering cold therapy, but you're helping to just draw out all of that inflammation. And I think compression um, and cold therapy are two of the most overlooked um, taken for granted type of physical therapy tools that we have for horses. So I always tell people don't underestimate the power of ice and compression, right? Those are two pillars of physical therapy, both for humans and horses um, that we have access to and really from a very affordable place. Um, so it just takes some effort and some time, get your ice packs out, get them, get them out of the freezer and, and get them on the horse. And I think particularly in the acute phases of inflammation, um, ice therapy remains an absolute must have. Um, it's for sure a pillar of getting things under control. So. Caroline had a question and I'm, she just said, she goes, is there an ideal time frame between removing hot leg boots, say after a performance to then applying ice boots? Is that too fast from hot to cold? So can you kind um, of talk about Yeah, no, I don't think that's, um, I don't think the transition itself, right, is is detrimental at all. Um, I think that getting, you know, as soon as that work is done, right, what I tell most of my my clients, right, is like as soon as you're done and those protective leg wraps can come off, um, you know, we should get some ice onto those horses. And what we're trying to do, at least what research has shown, is that a, a four degree difference in temperature is maximally beneficial for a change, meaning um, getting those tendon tissues cooled to at least four degrees colder than what they started out as is really the most beneficial. Um, and you'd be surprised, like in order for us to budge that therapeutic temperature, um, that does, it takes some time and it takes application of cold therapy directly to those tissues in order to achieve that. Um, and so I don't think there's any detriment in doing that. Um, you know, there's there's th some lines of thinking that we, we would call it contrast therapy on the human side of things, right? Like application alternating or oscillating cycles of heat and cold therapy 
in a more rehab type of setting are appropriate for some injuries. Um, but pursuant to your question, um, I think that that's just a, a great way to do things. Okay. We had a question. This one is from Amy and she asked, do you recommend icing all horses after any work or just as part of a rehab recovery plan? Um, and how long should we ice the legs? Yeah, very, very good questions. Um, I like to tell my owners and it, cause I like to give them a lot of homework and I'm very helicoptery as a veterinarian with my cases. I, I like to say that there is no particularly wrong time to ice. And one of the things that I love about people getting down in the barn, in the Iowa and putting on ice wraps after every single work is that it makes you look at those horses' legs. Like inevitably, right? We're all busy and we're gonna rinse them off. We're gonna dry them off. We're gonna throw them back in their stall. But if you're taking even that additional 30 seconds to one minute that it takes to just run your hands down that horse's leg, make sure everything feels good, putting your ice uh, wraps on. Um, I think that inevitably you're more vigilant and you're just taking a little bit more extra time to, to go the extra mile, right? And just ensure that you're picking up on changes like as quickly as possible because early disease recognition is the key no matter what you're dealing with, right? Um, in terms of how long to ice for, uh, there really isn't a, a max. Um, horses are not predisposed to frostbite, you know, as, as we classically think that humans are. And they have much thicker hide, they have thicker hair, um, and they're just able to sustain those colder temperatures for much longer than we are as humans. And, and obviously, if you have some level of skin irritation that's outside of the cold therapy, you want to be mindful of that. Um, some horses mentally are going to hit that mark where like I've stood here long enough and I've, I've been icing long enough and now I'm ready to get back to my regularly scheduled programming for the day. So again, you always have to work on that. But I like to tell people a minimum of 30 minutes um, in ice is wonderful. But, um, you know, you, you can you can ice things for quite a long time as long as the situation deems that it's appropriate. So. Um, Virginia asks, <laughs> do you prefer ice tub or using ice boots or wraps? So I think it, it really depends on the situation, right? Um, the major benefit for me with these, with like particularly the ice horse line is that things are dry. So we're not immersing things, meaning I'm not getting the skin wet and I'm not soaking the hooves or like disintegrating any of the hoof wall, um, particularly when I'm using their ice um, boots. Again, every veterinarian is different. Every diagnosis and every situation is different and it's gonna require you to you know, sometimes think outside of the box. Um, but I tell people any form of icing that you're doing that's providing some level of uniform compression and dropping those tissue temperatures is really going to be uh, beneficial in the long run. And I think as, like I said, as sports medicine and rehab continues to evolve, there's been so much more efforts into preserving the athlete that we have, right? And taking all of those little steps um, to ensure that we're taking care of that horse and that machine so that we can maximize the athletic career and the longevity of those horses. Um, and some horses are prepping to go back and jump Grand Prix. Some horses are preparing, you know, to be comfortable out in a pasture and what that looks like, right. is different for every single situation. Um, but icing in general, you know, is, is such a good thing. And I think all owners have access to it and can do it. It doesn't take a million dollar rehab center, you know, in order to do that. So those are all, these are all DIY things that I would, I would strongly recommend. So. Um, T. Lynn mentioned hydrotherapy and what your thoughts are on it. She says she has a hydro wand that attaches to a hose for cold water therapy to massage legs and spine for promoted healing. Yeah, and, I, and then that's just another, um, you know, commercially available form of cryotherapy. Um, you know, the circulation, the massage type of effect, whether you're massaging, compression, you know, all of those things that can look different you know in every single situation and 
like I said, 10 years ago, we didn't have all these, these resources, right? People didn't have mobile spas. People didn't have spas that were um, just installed in their barns. Like things have gotten so much more progressive and so much more geared towards preservation of the equine athlete that it's, it's really exciting to see, you know, people take the extra mile, particularly with cold therapy. I did see um, one question from Sue about the boots um, coming in sizes and um, they don't actually come in like, you know, small, medium, large there. I've used these on everything from the warm bloods to the hunter pony um, to the short little quarter horse legs. Um, one thing that I do tell people is that the suspensory wraps are longer um, than just the tendon wrap. So on the ice horse line, you will see that there's that distinction. And I think that's just important to know the suspensory wraps will um, extend all the way into the pastern region and the tendon wraps do not. So the tendons are just gonna stay up more on that cannon bone region um, in comparison to the, the suspensory wraps. Um, everything is very adjustable with a commercial grade um, fabric. And I'm sure you guys won't be able to tell like super well on video here, right? But um, this, and I sort of sent me some new, brand new ones to use because mine in the barn um, look like they've been through like World War III. <laughs> so they we were all like dirty and gross and highly used. So this is a brand new set, right? Um, and I always tell people that the Ice Horse logo is kind of meant as your guide of like which leg. So I put it on the outside. Um, so like this would be a left front. You've got your um, highly, highly strong Velcro that will always make you feel humbled and just trying to like detach it for the first few times. <laughs> Half the time I get it like, you know, stuck to my hair and it's a definitely commercial grade. We'll say it's not, not for the week. Um, so the ice horse wraps are also marked. So there's an L meaning this was a left. So I passed the test. Ha ha. It was a, it was a left. <laughs> um, and inside you're going to see this felt and we call the felt as our landing strip. And the landing strip is basically just meant to be your guide for where the ice packs go. So I, it's a little dark here in this office, but Basically, this is an L shape where you're able to just attach your ice packs. So every single ice pack um, comes with Velcro. And these are these are thawed, so these are not um, frozen ice packs. But there's actually Velcro um, on here, so that will actually fit to the landing strip. So what I do, pro tip, is I take the wrap, I put all of the ice on it before onto the wrap before I put it on the horse. And then I put the whole thing on the horse in one fail swoop. The first time you do it, you will um, look totally discombobulated, but then you'll get a system down and you'll have that thing whipped on in, in 30 seconds. Um, the ice packs themselves, you just want to put them in the freezer with this white button up. Um, so that's just important. It's a little bit of ventilation in order for that ice to freeze evenly. Um, and then when the, even when frozen, these ice packs are relatively malleable. So this is obviously thawed, but even when you have them completely frozen, they're not super stiff and hard. They still will be able to conform um, to the leg. So that's kind of like the 30 second um, overview of how to use these. All of these are coated in an antimicrobial wash. So they're meant to actually be clean. If if they get dropped in the barn, which I'm not saying I do it, I definitely do it. Um, you can just like, just take a damp towel and wipe them off and then refreeze them. So I have a whole freezer that's dedicated um, to my, my icing equipment and my ice packs. I have never to date had someone actually wear out uh, one of the wraps, like have to come by back and buy another one because it wore out. Um, they're extremely durable. And if they get dirty, which they will, um, I usually just take a brush and just knock the, the shavings off and things. So incredibly durable. Um, and like I said, they just, they look nice. They're not bulky. The fit is excellent. Um, the stifle wraps are my favorite. Sorry, suspensory wraps, but they are. 
um, because I can do so many things with them. And I, I like the back blanket as well. We get um, a lot of post-op back cases in for rehab. And that's really one thing that um, I really think makes a huge difference, particularly in the short, you know, immediate post-op type of period. Um, I've been talking a lot. What are other questions? <laughs> Um, Brianna asks, when would you use cold hydrotherapy versus warm hydrotherapy? Um, so that's a great question. And the, the, you always, whenever you do any therapy, like no matter what it is, cold, heat, uh, PEMF, uh, whole body vibration, like whatever it is, you have to have a rehab goal in mind. And if you cannot answer the question of what you are trying to accomplish in using that particular modality, then you probably don't need to be doing it. So you want to have a goal for every single thing. Whenever I use heat therapy, for example, my goal is usually to reduce pain and improve soft tissue extensibility. So I'm typically applying heat to things that have a much more chronic um chronic nature to them. So things I'm trying to soften up. So that can be scar tissue formation. That can be um, hypertonic muscles, extremely stiff muscles, a horse that's been guarding or bracing something for a very long time. Um, I will actually use quite a bit of heat therapy before um, core physiotherapeutic exercises. So in, for example, like a human PT program, they would apply heat therapy first before asking you to stretch to physiologically just warm up the muscles and to provide more soft tissue extensibility. So that being said, I don't use that in the same way that I use icing. So icing for me is typically a recovery tool and a decreasing inflammation tool. So I would not apply ice, for example, prior to stretching or prior to warming that athlete up. It would definitely be more of a um, post-exercise recovery type of tool. So I hope, um, I hope that answers the question, but it's a, it's a great question. And, and I do love me some heat therapy. Icehorse does make heat packs as well. Um, so it's, it's a pack kind of like this, but it doesn't, it's got a gel, not ice. You can microwave it and stick it in the exact same wraps that you have. Um, and I actually use that um, a lot as well. I love, I love my heat therapy, um, particularly in my older, just very stiff horses. So Audrey, yeah, asked, right? oh, sorry. Audrey had asked if a thin cloth should be used between the skin and the ice boots, or do you just put it directly on? Uh, for me with the ice horse line, I put it directly on. Um, if I have a leg that is gross, like from a skin situation that's not related to the icing itself, what I'll do is I'll take saran wrap and I will wrap my ice pack so that I'm just keeping it really clean. Um, and that's only to just not expose my ice pack to gross skin if that happens to be the case. Um, but the saran wrap actually works really well and then you just take it off afterwards. Um, again, you can clean these ice packs very easily um, and, and just keep everything really hygienic. Right. But I get like an icky feeling if I take something that's kind of just got some leg scurf and I'm icing it and I don't like that. I'll actually just saran wrap my ice pack, put it on, um, and then make sure that everything is staying clean that way. But yeah, great question. Um, Jill was wondering your thoughts on swimming therapy. Um, aquatic therapy, again, one of my loves. Um, I am a huge believer in the underwater treadmill therapy, so that's not to be confused with swimming. Um, I'm not as big of a free swim type of person, and that's simply because most of the patients that I work with, um, I'm really needing them in a controlled environment, and I'm really needing to um, control speed, do things much more gradual, and I like to have um, titratable control over my water depth and also my speed um, whenever possible. So Dr. King, Melissa King out of Colorado State University did a whole entire PhD program in aquatic therapy and definitely has um, some great literature that's out there looking at the benefits of aquatic therapy, particularly in um, arthritic horses, um, that of knees. And there's been a whole host of studies that have been done, you know, within the past 10 or 15 years, looking at those benefits as well. Um, 
there's a paper looking at the different water depths and how you can actually target certain joint ranges of motion based on the water depth that you're looking to achieve. So um, I find that, you know, to be super fascinating, right? Like the aquatic protocol that we use for one horse um, may differ significantly uh, for, you know, from one horse to the next horse and vice versa. So at our rehab center here in Whitesboro, we actually have an in-ground linear underwater treadmill. So it's a high depth um, unit. It's made by Hydro Horse and it's a little older. At our Scottsdale facility, we have the brand spanking new um, Nautilus Wave, and that's produced by the same company that produces the Nautilus spa system. And it's a fabulous unit and it's actually an above ground underwater treadmill system, but we have ours set into a pit just a little bit. So it actually sets a little bit lower um, and we're able to adjust water depth super easily with that system. And um, I like to target all of those things, neurologic horses, horses that aren't stable or may have the balance deficits. Um, they may usually are a lot more suited to an above ground underwater treadmill unit than they are an in-ground linear system. And that's simply due to the navigation of the ramp um, coming in and out. So aquatic therapy is one of my favorite things um, and really spending time in the barn, right? And watching these horses perform these various um, therapies will tell you a lot about their suitability and how, how they're doing. Um, whether they're trying to cheat the system and ride the treadmill back or they're actually clocking into work and um, putting in full effort. So <laughs> we have a variety of personalities um, in rehab, as you can imagine. Some are like the gangly basketball players and others <laughs> are the, you know, perfect angel baby gymnast. So <laughs> everyone is just is very different. So. Pam had asked, uh, for known arthritis, how helpful is daily icing after each ride? I think it, the benefits can range, right? And they're highly um, horse dependent. But I think anything you're doing to keep that horse at a steady state of comfort is likely to be beneficial. So every horse's response is different, right? Um, but I, I'll put it this way. Icing is definitely... Um, not going to hurt anything and most likely to help things. So um, I give it, you know, the two, two thumbs up. Um, Lynn had a good question. She said, ideas for keeping ice boots cold at competition. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, a Yeti cooler. <laughs> um, I don't know. I usually like on our mobile unit, we have a freezer that is in our semi. So for those of you who don't know, we have a semi. It's basically a modified NASCAR trailer that was built um, by Dr. Alan Donnell. And it was uh, modified for mobile transport. And we have a freezer um, in it. And we keep all of our ice packs in there, but um, nine times out of 10 people at horse shows, they've either brought in, like, like they've brought some cooler that's got some icing capacity. They have a camper. Um, they've got something within their unit to keep those ice packs cold. Um, but yeah, that's Yeti. Get a Yeti sponsorship would be, would be helpful. I think so there's ice horses next collaboration, right? Is like ice horse meets Yeti. And um has, you know, what could be better? It seems like they go hand in hand. Um, Jess asks, besides tissues, what about bone and joints? Um, as far as icing or, yeah. Um, yeah, I think all of those tissues are gonna benefit, right? The thing that we struggle with is depth of penetration. So. The deeper that you're getting into that anatomic structure, the more difficult it is to change that tissue temperature to that four degrees, right? Um, so that's where, you know, you just have to realize that it's maybe going to take longer for those target tissues to reach that max therapeutic temperature change. Um, like a superficial digital flexor tendon, right, is going to receive that cold therapy much more quickly than a proximal suspensory just because of the depth of penetration. So there's certain anatomic regions, right, that are just a bugger um, to get super cold and, and horses are big and the tissues are big, the equine back, the equine pelvis, um, the sacroiliac regions, right, those are all super, super dense in terms of their tissue makeup. 
Um, but we're trying to target, you know, muscle, fascia, bone, tendon, ligament, um, anything that we can get to just reduce that inflammation and is, is going to be, um, is going to be the key, but it, it is a struggle, right? It's, um, there's no, there's no easy, fast, simple solution to a lot of those, those deeper tissues. Um, so yeah, all really good questions. We had a comment on how, what's the best way to get rid of the smell on the boots? Like if they get stinky, is there a good way to clean them? Can you use like water or? You can. Um, so I have actually directly like hosed off these before and then I just lay them out to dry. Um, if you are going, I don't, I don't usually stick them in the washer dryer and maybe ice horse, uh, Julia ice horse would have a better recommendation, but um, I tend to hose mine off, honestly, and dry them. I would put them in a delicate cycle if you are going to put them in the washing machine. They're durable enough. I can't see that being a problem, but um, I just wouldn't want anyone to get any pilling of their fabric. Um, that would be my only recommendation. But I tell you, I'm hard on things. Like we have a lot of horses. We usually have about 40 horses at a time at our Whitesboro Center. And so when I tell you I've put... I put equipment through the paces, my staff and myself, like well, I always say, I'm like, this is why we can't have nice things is um, <laughs> we just have, have constant things. Right. So um, I think that's really the easiest way is to just be mindful and, um, you know, keep it, keep it clean. And, and like I said, I haven't had anyone have to actually replace their wraps because they were out, including myself. Um, addition, usually people will come and buy more of the ice packs. They just like to have more on hand. Um, and they, iSource does sell packs that are um, a la carte. So even if you don't need a set of new wraps, um, you can just buy the a la carte. And I believe everything Valley Vet is available for you guys or through you guys today. Um, so if you guys are out there wondering how to get any of this equipment, um, head to Valley Vets. Um, they'll be able to drop ship you whatever you need. Um, iSource is a great resource as well in terms of um, how to instructional things. And we've slowly built a library on like um, just applying how, how it is easiest to get things on and little tutorials and things like that. So we have a few fun um, videos out there as well. So um, Sue had asked if you could leave them on the horse in stalls and not tied up. You can. Yep, you can. Um, I usually don't. I mean, I usually have a horse tied if they're getting some sort of therapy. Um, but the horse is like they're durable enough that if the horse is just taking small steps around, they're going to stay in in the icing equipment. Um, so, yeah, I think if that's um, comfortable for that situation, then you certainly can. Um, we had a couple people, I think, ask about your opinions on beamer blankets. -E yeah, I, um, I believe there's a new paper coming out of Colorado State University investigating the use of um, Beamer blanket in cases of back pain. But honestly, I wasn't directly involved in that study, so I'm not able to provide um, any spoiler alerts. Uh, so I don't I don't know that I have a ton to say about it um, other than there should be more additional research coming out um about that modality specifically. So. Oh, Jessica uh, said, I know some people will keep the ice in the boots and put the whole thing in the freezer. Um, I keep taking the ice out and putting them in before applying. Does it matter either way? Um, you can do it either way. I always take my ice packs off the wraps um, and then I put them in the freezer. One, because it takes up freezer space. Um, and then two, if there is any like debris or anything on the wraps themselves, I just like to keep it out of my freezer. Um, and that way I can just, you know, keep everything clean and tidy at one time. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a creative thing. I, haven't, I, haven't, <laughs> I always learn when I do these kind of things, I'm like, oh, well, I guess you can, you can do it that way. So um, I guess that would make your actual like um, wrap a little bit chilled as well. So um, Lynn asked it, what's the best way to ice a back? 
or anything special? The best, the best way to ice a back, um, I think you can go about it one of two ways. Um, the the ice horse back blanket that they have is wonderful um, for applying like uh, ice therapy along the entirety of the equine spine. The I call them like the belly wraps, but when you look at the back blanket and the wraps that come up, there's anti-migration fabric that's that that is made of that. And so it actually won't slip or slide back. So when you get the wrap put on, it really does stay in place very nicely, which I like. So it's not going to fall down. It's not going to slide back. The anti-migration material is super important to achieving that. Um, so that's absolutely my preferred way to deliver both um, cold and heat to the equine spine. Um, and then a pro tip of like, if you're in a bind and for whatever reason, a horse isn't broke, like isn't handleable enough to, to handle the actual application of the back blanket. So if you had like a super young horse, um, you can always freeze water in an, in a Dixie cup and you can actually peel the Dixie cup and directly manually apply ice massage as well. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, right? But I work with horses sometimes that aren't necessarily very trained um, or very broke to, to things like that. And so you just gotta think outside of the box as like what keeps the situation safe. Um, and so I, I Dixie cup iced, you know, a lot of things in my day as well. But if the horse is mentally, um, manageable and like safe enough to handle. I like the ice horse back blanket specifically. And like I said, I use heat therapy um, and icing for that as well. So I really, I really like both. Okay. Um, Caroline asks, are ice boots safe to combine with other therapies such as poultice um, and magnetic blankets? Uh, kind of. I mean, it depends. It depends on the horse. It depends on their diagnosis. Um, it depends on what kind of poultice you're using. I'm kind of a like, I'm going to do this at one session. If I'm switching therapies, I try not to overload the system. Um, so I do try to keep things as separate as possible. Um, but it, you know, that's kind of a tough question to answer in that it, it really depends on the horse and the diagnosis and everything that, that you're trying to achieve with that. I'm kind of a purist in that, like, I do this therapy and then I do this therapy and I keep them separate. Um, but yeah. Um, Nikki asked, uh, what would work for a shoulder? So there is, the shoulder is a good one. Um, and Ice Horse actually is in the process of making a shoulder one, but they also have this multi-purpose wrap that can really be used in almost any anatomic region. Um, so I would advise people to look into that. I don't know that her actual like shoulder wrap is out yet, but I have used the multi-purpose wrap um, in a variety of settings, including a shoulder. Um, for that very reason. And, you know, you get like, you can buy shoulder guards that go under like a blanket to protect from like hair rubbing on certain things. So ideally, like you're looking for something to conform there. Um, but I have iced several shoulders, horses that run into posts or, you know, had to have something, uh, a skin situation removed over the point of a shoulder, that kind of thing. Um, so you have those options. And then the Dixie Cup um, icing, which is not as glamorous, you standing there doing it, um, but that's always an option as well. So, okay. um, Lynn asks, what's up with the new salt hydrotherapy? Um, not sure. I know what you mean. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can all find out. I, I don't know what's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You stumped me. Um, I know there's a lot of um, commercially available um, spa systems uh, for horses. The one that I prefer is the Nautilus because I think the chiller is superior um, to the other chiller, other chilling systems that are out there. And I'm a huge fan of anything that breaks the least. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to say Nautilus gets my vote on that one. And I think in terms of design, if you guys have ever seen a Nautilus spa or like been up close to it, it's just built very well. Um, everything is sturdy. 
everything is stout. Um, horse is not going to kick through the back. Like everything is just, it feels very safe. Um, so, and, and I don't know, like we always try to do little, like icing challenges, right? Like, can you hold your hand in the, in the spa for like more than four minutes and it hurts? Like I, these people doing like these cold plunges and like things like that, as much icing as I apply to horses, you think I would be more gritty or like open to doing those things? I do. Not. <laughs> those are, those are painful. Um, and I'm a wimp. So, um, yeah, we had a couple people ask, they said they were sorry they missed the beginning. This will be saved on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. So you'll be able to go back and watch it, um, after the fact. So just watch it whenever is convenient for you. Um, I think I see one right here that um, Amy asked, and she said, at what point should horse owners involve their veterinarian um, when a horse is seemingly off? And Amy, I think that is a wonderful question. And the answer is early and often. Um, so if you're, you're the person with that horse every single day, right, you know that horse better than anybody. And if something in your gut is not right, um, seems off, seems different, I would definitely get it checked out. Best case scenario, right, is everything is fine and, and you're being, you know, a little helicoptery, right? That's great. Um, you know, you don't want to go down the road, right, where you're like, well, actually, like a few weeks ago, it felt kind of weird, but I blew it off, you know. Um, so I think early intervention is the key, right? Like the the earlier we can detect these injuries and, and things that start to just begin as small subtleties that can then spiral, right? Like you want to be on the front end of those things. And no one likes, um, no one likes the ship that has already sailed. So as much as you can, having that really good uh, working relationship with your veterinarian and establishing that rapport, um, the more often that your veterinarian sees that horse and is able to visit with you and um, learn more about your expectations of the horse and what all of that is like, I think the more effective they can actually be to you. Right. So um, early and often, but definitely a good question. And, and she also asked, are there any best practices for injury rehab that we as owners should be considering overall? Um, and my response to you would be twofold. One, change one thing at a time. Change small things at a time if you're rehabbing at home. So that if you do have a setback or something seems a little bit more painful one day, that you hadn't changed everything all at once. So always leave yourself a breadcrumb trail to go back to, right? Like um, you'd be able to retrace your steps in terms of the modifications that you made if you can. Um, and the second thing is like if just having that regular checkup and that longitudinal follow-up is key. So rehab is not a crock pot. It's not set it and forget it. You're going to do this for like six months and I'll see you later. It is a dynamic process and, you know, no human doctor or human physical therapist said to their patient, you know what, just like sit on the couch for a year and it'll probably get better. Like that's probably the ticket. So I think as we're getting more and more, equipped with better strategies for horses in terms of targeted muscle strengthening, um, a lot more interventional custom therapies. I think that those options are looking much brighter, you know, for us to, to have more abilities to affect these outcomes. So very good question, Amy. Thank you. And you guys have been awesome asking really great questions. Um, and making me giggle at some of these uh, comments. They're, you guys are a great audience. So. <laughs> um, okay, well, kind of at the um, tail end of questions here. Was that one more? Did I miss one? Oh, Amy, for the win, you always ask really good questions. She said, of all the horses you have worked with, is there a rehab case that stands out in your mind as one of my favorite success stories? Absolutely. <laughs> um, at our rehab center in Whitesboro, we have a wall of fame. So we have some of our pictures, canvas portraits of some of our very most favorite and treasured cases. Um, I have one of my very first, um, very high profile horses that I worked with. Um, I was very early on in my career. It was a great case and a great outcome. And 
Um, that horse, if you have watched any of my um, professional presentations that I do, he appears at least once in every single talk that I do. And um, I keep him with me. I have about three horses that I do that with, and they will repeatedly show up as pictures um, in my, my presentations. And I think veterinarians in general, right, are hugely empathetic. We're very type A. We're very perfectionist type driven. <clears throat> and so I think it's it, it has gotten me through a lot of days to focus on the things that went right and the horses that went well and the horses that I truly was able to help for really good people. Um, because there's always going to be those cases that you don't win and, and things that don't always go well. And so absolutely, I keep those victories like right here mm -hmm. with me um, at all times. So I, I really appreciate that question. Super, super cool things. All right. I think we have time for probably one more question. And Tracy asked, do you have a tip to help a rat fit a small horse, minis or ponies? Um, great question. The multi-purpose wrap, um, if it's like super, super small, the multi-purpose wrap is where I would start with ice horse. Um, additionally, their, their foot boots also, I do believe, come in different sizes or like smaller. Um, so that would be one thing to look into. But honestly, the multi-purpose wrap is a total game changer. And I think it's one of the, the lower ticket items that ice horse sells. It's like you kind of got to like know somebody that knows somebody because it's not like you wouldn't think it's that useful, um, but it's honestly like a game changer for weird areas to ice and also just like very small patients, um, things like that. So look into the multi-purpose wrap. I think you'll really like it. It's made of the anti-migration fabric um, and I think it remains undefeated, so. Oh, Pam, I love <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I was hoping you would join us today. I was so excited I, I, when I saw someone I knew. <laughs> All right. Things to say. Uh, Dr. Awesome. Johnson, did you have anything else that you wanted to add or that we didn't cover that you wanted to talk about? I don't think so. Just thanks for having me and thanks for everyone to listening to me drone on here <laughs> and um, head to Valley Vet for all of the, the Ice Horse ordering stuff or go to Ice Horse's um, webpage specifically. If you're interested in following our practice on social media, on Instagram, we are at Equine Sports Medicine spelled out and then ESM. So there's two E's in a row at Equine Sports Medicine ESM. There's all kind of behind the scenes um, in barn footage. The stories are mostly comical um, and we try to be very uplifting. We are on Facebook as well. Our picture is our mobile unit. Um, and give us a like, a follow, a share. We appreciate all of the love and support. So thank you so much for having, for having me today. Thank you. Um, I will share a link to all the products on our website as well when we're off of here. So um, I'll get that on there. So, all righty. I do believe that we have a winner. One lucky winner is going oh. to receive a pair yes, of Ice Horse dispensary wraps. Pam Hurst. <laughs> All, right. All right, the winner for today is Brianna Selleck. Nice. Oh, you even get confetti. I don't have any confetti. <laughs> Congratulations. If you're still on here watching, go ahead and send us a private message, please. All right, yeah. Dr. Johnson, we want to thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me today. I think all of the viewers appreciated it too. Yes. Lots of thank yous and kudos to you. Yes, <laughs> very much so. All right, just a few announcements before right, we leave you today. We still have the Spray Master Spectacular going on right now. So this ends uh, May 12th. So get entered now. We also have. Um, positively awesome giveaway going on too. And I'll share both of those links when we're done here. And join us again next Wednesday. We're going to be live again. We're going to be with Professionals Choice talking about the latest fashion and functions in fly control and uh, launching a brand new fly boot. And you are going to love it. <laughs> so you won't want to miss that one. So thank All you right. everybody for joining us. See you next thank week. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you guys. <laughs>